Okay, if you live in the digital age, you have so much stuff to read all over the place, whether it's Twitter, Reddit, blog posts, news articles, PDFs, books. There's so much stuff all over the place. How do you remember what you want to read when you have time to do it? There are apps out there like Pocket, Instapaper, Flipboard that aim to kind of consolidate it into one place. The app I'm talking you through today is like these, but way better in my opinion. So let me give you an introduction to the Reader app. So there are two core aspects to Reader. The first is making it simple to bring all your reading information, whether that's from blogs, articles, YouTube videos, Twitter threads, RSS feeds, PDFs, all of those things that are out there in the digital world brings it into one single place, and that is the Reader app. And so that's why I've pulled up in front of you my uh, one of my inboxes within Reader, and you'll see there's so many different articles, YouTube videos, PDFs that I've saved with the intent to read them when I have time. So that is like the first part of it. And I'll quickly show you um, a really quick example of how that works in progress. So you'll see in my library of, of things that I've saved, there is an inbox. So this is where all the stuff lands initially. And I'll quickly show you how maybe, if I'm on a desktop, how that process looks. So I've jumped over here to BBC News and there's an article about how the UK economy shrank. So if I'm interested into reading that later, maybe I wanna take notes. The quickest way for me is a, a browser extension for the Reader app here, I'll click it and it will save to Reader. There is also a shortcut for doing this. And what if I jump back to the inbox now, you'll see that there is now this article. Similarly, I've already done this for Twitter, but I saw an interesting thread about one person, Ilya, reviewing uh, the same app that I'm reviewing right now. Um, and I thought I'd test it out by doing uh, what you can do is if you link your Twitter account with Readwise, you can say Readwise save thread, and that will also appear in your inbox, like so. And thirdly and finally, let me just do another one with a YouTube video. So Computer File is a, a channel I like to watch on occasion. Dijkstra's algorithm is something I need to kind of brush up on. Um, and so I will hit the reader button because I haven't got 10 minutes to read, watch that right now. And that will, should show up in Reader. So that's like the first stage, right? You can capture so many different sources as you're going through your day and bring them here. I've just shown you how to capture things on my MacBook. So from various web pages and uh, YouTube and so on, but that just touches the surface. You can email things, you can subscribe to RSS feeds, and there is, of course, an iOS, and I believe Android app, to do this all on your phone. And talking about the phone, the reading experience is much the same, and I will produce possibly a second video if there's interest on the experience of using it on the iPhone, but it is very, very similar design, incredible UI, incredible features all on your phone. So that kind of is a really whistle-stop tour of how you can capture information and bring it into Reader to review later. So that's one huge benefit. And this is where it's very similar to services like Pocket, um, Instapaper, Flipboard, all those apps that are very powerful because you, you there's so much stuff out there, bringing it into one place just makes things a lot more manageable. But then the second part, which I think is where Reader can really shine as well is actually both the organization of these and then the actual reading experience. So I'll briefly touch upon the organization, um, but I won't go into too much detail. But what you'll see here is that we've saved three things this, uh, today. And if you don't have time to read and you want to do a bit of organization instead, what you can do is sit down maybe each week or each day and review your inbox. And you can go through a really simple process, perhaps you think Dieter's algorithm, I don't need to know that anymore, so I'll move that to the archive. So it's still in this inbox of 
archive stuff that you've maybe been interested in, but not really. And then this one about the economy shrinking, shrinking um, you find interesting. So you're saying, I'm gonna move that to later. I definitely want to read that. Same with this Twitter thread. thread. From there, you could maybe get in, envisage a more complex workflow where you take an article and you start doing tags and say, this is about um, economics. Oh, this one is about, uh, what is it? It's technology or apps and so on. And the way I could see that being useful is you can see there's a list of tags here is if you have certain workflows where you need to do like weekly reading for learning data science or for learning programming, you can filter down to articles tagged with that, sit down and read for an hour and increase your learning. That may be too sophisticated for some, so I won't go into any more detail, but even just the inbox later and archive approach, I think is really powerful. So last but certainly not least is the actual reading experience itself. So what I've gone ahead and done is jump into one article that I've saved and, and gone through in the past, which is an article from the BBC News about nuclear fusion and there's a breakthrough in, in the research around that. And so you'll see this reading experience is super nice. What you have on the left is um, automatically generated contents. So if there's a lot of subheaders, it will bring that on the left. In the center stage, you have the article itself. Um, and it's basically passed all the text and brought it into a nice looking uh, reading experience. I'll just do one thing here. As you scroll down, a really nice thing is that you'll see this progress bar comes along. And then finally, for those who like to take notes, um, whether it's to increase your knowledge or remember certain bits of information, you can highlight, add notes, and even tag specific parts of the article. And that will show up in your notebook here, right? I'm just gonna delete this. And so you see I've highlighted here, uh, nuclear fusion is potentially the holy grail of energy production, it's similar to the process that happens in the sun. So that's a really interesting fact. I wanted to highlight that and kind of remember that. And it's a really nice experience to kind of, if you were ever to come back to this article, the notebook is there, you can see your highlights and so on. The final thing I'll mention is like on the right hand side, there's a metadata thing about uh, when the article was published, how long it is, your progress, when you saved it and so on. So the whole experience is super, super interesting. The final thing that I'll say is that they also have a really novel feature, which is called Ghost Reader. Now Ghost Reader is leveraging um, a clever AI model, GPT-3, um, to kind of do various summarizations of the article. So what I really like is this one called generate thought provoking questions. So what is going behind the scenes is they're feeding this article to a pre-trained model. It will get the gist of the article and then prompt you with clever questions. So it says, what challenges remain in order to make nuclear fusion reality? Uh, what kind of investment is needed in order to scale up uh, the energy source? Um, so, you know, some of these might be hit or miss given that it is an AI model trying to summarize an article and interpret useful questions, but you can see the benefits. Um, I'll do another one just quickly to show you, okay, summarize the document for me. Give it a few seconds. And it produces a nice summary so you can Imagine using this if you're like a student studying a really difficult paper um, or you want to kind of challenge your thinking in some way. These two features um, 
yes, they may be novel, but I think they could be very powerful for certain workflows and certain types of people. The final super awesome thing about Reader is that you may not like the way a article is rendered inside the Reader app, but that's not necessarily a problem. So if we come back to uh, an article we saved earlier, so the UK economy shrank. If you don't like the way this is rendered and you want to read it in situ, you can be on the original page and still highlight thanks to having the reader um, extension installed on the browser. So if I say I want to highlight this, you'll see the exact same features of adding notes, highlights and tags is still there. So I can close that now. The highlight has remained. I can always go back to that page. The highlight remains. It's really, really cool. Now, the final thing I'll say about um, the reading experience is that it also has great app integrations. So if you are a user of Roam Research, Notion, Obsidian, Evernote, you can sync all your highlights and your notes with these app note-taking management systems. And it's something I personally do with Obsidian, uh, which is my current uh, knowledge management system. So if I show you an example, The final part of the reading experience in Reader is that you can actually take notes on videos, so not just articles. So let me just show you how that works. So I've saved a video from Computer Farm. So what you'll see here is that the video, um, the, the transcript attached to the video is generated inside Reader and you can take notes alongside the video playing. So if I said, okay, this layer, we've got 20, if that was an interesting note, what you'll see is added it to my notebook along with the timestamp that at that point in the video. So if I just reset that and I want to go and view that, so we've got 20 it takes me to the exact point where they said this layer we've got 20 outputs so that's really really powerful because if you're taking notes on a video that's one of the eternal problems is oh there's a 20 minute video when did i take that note well now you have a solution and once again these notes can be imported into your note taking system of notion and obsidian it's just so powerful for learning and capturing your knowledge Okay, so that brings me to the end of this introduction to the Reader app by Readwise. Honestly, I think it's one of the best apps out there to increase your ability to actually read all this information. Um, I think Pocket, Flipboard, Instapaper, those apps are brilliant and do very similar things, but Reader's reading experience, the ability to integrate with other note-taking systems like Obsidian, Roam, and Notion, just sets this apart really, really well. Um, so I hope you give it a go, explore using it, and yeah, let me know how you find it in the comments.